Hi, welcome to my channel again. Today we are going to configure mail enable and outlook with mail submission port 587 and SMTPS 465 port with authentication and SSL encryption so that user can send mail from outlook with authentication and encryption. Normally we used to configure outgoing SMTP 25 port on the outlook but most of the ISP blocks outgoing 25 port connectivity from their clients network because spam bots targets server 25 port from the allowed network. To protect spamming from the client network, we need to use submission or SMTPS port for mail sending. So let's start the configuration. First, we need to create the SSL for the server because we want to make our server to use the SSL for its SMTP communication with the client. Let's go to the IS manager. If you want to use CA certificate, then you can uh, create from here certificate signing request. But we are using the self sign certificate here. So create self sign certificate. Specify a friendly name for the certificate. And select a certificate store for the new certificate. Personal is OK. So we have created the self sign certificate for this server. Certificate name is mguru cert issued to mailer.mailserverguru.com and issued by this server and this is the expiration date this is for one year this certificate will only applicable to the mailer.mailserverguru.com so after creating the certificate we need to configure the server with the certificate here default SSL certificate we need to choose now let's open the SMTP configuration on the inbound tab we have few settings here port setting advanced setting IP address connection restriction inbound IP binding and inbound TLS. Let's configure from the last option. Allow clients to establish secure sessions via start TLS. Start TLS means we are enabling TLS or SSL support on the server on 25 port connectivity. It's the encryption option. The server will advertise to the client during the SMTP conversation starting time. Before enabling the start TLS, let's go to the client system. Let's tell it on mailer.mailserverguru.com. Now if we type hello, mailer server response with the authentication it supports and the maximum message size etc if we enable the start tls option from the server then if the client telnets to the server the server will advertise its tls capability so now let's enable the option and we need to restart the service so the service is enabled now if we telnet again to the server Now you can see that server response with the start TLS. That means if client want, client can communicate with the TLS certificate with the 25 port. So now if we go to the client's configuration, user1.mailserverguru.com is configured here. Go to the advanced setting. During the communication, if we select this and test then log into successful and send text message also successful. Now if we change the setting 25 port with TLS. Let's check the account. Now it shows the certificate. This is the first time that this client is communicating with the server. That's why the server is showing the certificate. Now if the client install the certificate The certificate won't reappear again. Now you can see that client can communicate with the server through the 25 port with TLS enabled. So if Outlook wants to communicate with the server securely, then Outlook can enable the TLS connection. But this is not mandatory for the clients to enable the TLS connection. Client can communicate with the server's 25 port with or without the TLS enabled. So start TLS will not enforce client to communicate with the server securely. So we are not choosing this option to enforce the clients to communicate with the server securely. We need to go to the port setting. And you can see that our server is listening on 25 port here. So we will change the 25 port here to 465 the SMTPS secure SMTP port and it must be required SSL and require connection to authenticate before sending email 
so client has to authenticate itself authentication means that before sending any mail client must send the username and password to the server for the validity check if the username and password is valid then the server will allow the client to communicate with it so this is called the authentication so we have enabled the required connection to authenticate before sending email and only allow secure authentication using SSL or TLS so this option ensures that uh, server will not accept any connection without SSL or TLS and 465 with SSL this is called the SMTPS connection and also we can enable the submission port or 587 on the 587 we are also enabling the required SSL and require authentication and to communicate with the 587 port client must communicate with the SSL or TLS so you can ask that why 465 and 587 both port are enabled and with the same settings 465 actually this is called the SMTPS port if any client connects to 465 then instantly an SSL initiation will be started but if any client connects to 587 SSL connection is not mandatory but we are enabling SSL certificate on both the connection that is the most recommended and secure way to configure these two ports so let's click OK and apply we need to restart the SMTP service now if we go to the client we must set outgoing server require authentication and we can communicate with the 465 port with SSL mentioned now if we test it is successfully sending test mail now if we change the setting to 587 with the SSL let's test again so client can communicate with the server both 465 with SSL and 587 submission port with the SSL mentioned and both connection needs authentication so if we uncheck the authentication let's see what happens so it is not accepting the connection so we must click the outgoing server require authentication now it can connect again so we have seen the port settings we have enabled 465 and 587 port so let's go to the second option advanced settings maximum number of concurrent connection from the client it can allow 32 concurrent connection and this is the maximum message size so we have seen that during the telnet session it advertised with this message size if we check again here you can see that this is the message size max message size from server setting so we are not changing anything here on IP address connection restriction let's see all grant access but we deny one IP so we have denied one IP so our piece is IP now if we hit again the send receive let's see what happens now it cannot communicate with the server now check again so it can successfully communicate so the IP address connection restriction settings will be by default all will be denied and we will only allow the local subnet of ours click close now on the inbound IP binding 
we have two option always bind the service to all available IP we do not need to bind the SMTP service on all IP so we can select only bind to the selected IP we do not need IPv6 and if you have extra IP for local communication then we can deselect those so we are deselecting allow IPv6 client connectivity let's click apply we need to restart the SMTP service click OK so if we recap what we have done first we have created our SSL certificate then we have configured our server and we have selected the default certificate then on the SMTP on the inbound tab we have checked the start TLS behavior and we have enabled the 465 and 587 SMTPS and submission port with the SSL and SMTP authentication so this is it for today thank you for being with me and if you still didn't subscribe to my channel please subscribe it will help me a lot to create more helpful videos for you so thank you I'll see you on the next video bye